Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. A uh, very exciting week coming up uh, because I have two models I'm going to start working on. And I guess both of these, um, I was aware they were coming out. Uh, I may not have been aware how quickly they were coming. Uh, so first, we have the USS Grissom from Round 2 Star Trek line. And also this week, we're going to be looking at the AT-80 uh, from... This is a re-release of an old MPC kit. And this is not only the AT-80, uh, but it will also be two turrets and two snow speeders to go along with it. So this is going to be an unboxing video I'm going to do later in the week. But right now, I have the USS Grissom NCC-638. And so big thanks to Polar Lights slash round two for sending me these review copies. A uh, very exciting model to look at. Um, I guess a few things have to be said first thing about the USS Grissom. First, yes, this is 1 350th scale. And we need to remember, 1 350th is a scale, it's not a size. Now, all the other model kits that Round 2 has put out in 1 through 50 scale have been big hero ships. Uh, they've all been, I think, at the smallest 30-inch models. I think the Katinga was like 30 inches. The NX-01, I think, was 32 inches. The TOS 350th scale is about 35. And the classic, the, the wonderful 1 through 50 scale refit is 36 inches long. Now this model, even though it's 1 3 of scale, will not be in that size range. This is a much smaller ship. So this is going to be a model closer to about 13 inches. So we've got to remember, even though it's 1 3 of scale, it is not going to be a huge 3-foot model when we're done. The other thing we've got to kind of talk about on the Grissom is this is a beautiful design for a starship done by ILM, Industrial Light and Magic, for Star Trek Three, And like a lot of sci-fi ships, pretty hard to work out how the interior actual fits. Uh, it's hard to work out how many decks this ship would actually have. Um, the size it is, it should really have two decks in that saucer. So why there's four sets of windows, nobody really knows. We're just going to move past that and accept it for what it is. But yeah, we have the USS Grissom. This is a science vessel, um, and that's really what Star Trek is about. You know, we don't need everything to be a warship. This is a science vessel. Um, very unique, uh, with no direct connection between this hull and the saucer section. Uh, once again, you know, the interior may not be that well thought out. Uh, no way to really get between these unless this is like a water slide style turbo lift. Um, but most people think this is probably just a big science sensor pallet that you don't really need to get to. And all the work is done up here. But I love this ship. I love the design because it's com done completely different than the Miranda and the Constitution, uh, which were mostly kind of copy and paste parts done in different arrangements. Um, this is different saucer, different nacelle. Uh, different section down here, but it's still undeniably a Federation starship from the same era. So, all new kit. We've got Captain Kirk up in the corner, because of course this is from the movie line, the search for Spock, so Kirk is kind of our figurehead for that. Uh, now this model, the, the studio model, was used a lot in The Next Generation, and I think at least once in Deep Space Nine. So it has lots of different names for its different appearances. And this model kit is going to give you optional registries and pennants in case you want to make it one of the ships from uh, Star Trek The Next Generation. Okay, And of course we get the typical dome base that Round 2 usually includes. A couple of pictures of the model across. And just like they always do, they include a quote from one of the captains. I guess the captain in Star Trek 3 doesn't really have that many great quotes. Uh, I think he mostly was there to tell people not to go down to Genesis. So they have a quote from an admiral who had one of these in The Next Generation. Uh, this should be from the episode with the Pegasus, um, where Riker has to kind of turn in his old admiral. 
and I think the entire finale of Star Trek Enterprise takes place within the episode this court is from, uh, so that's kind of unique. Along the back, we have authentic detailing throughout. Uh, you get a couple optional parts. Uh, this is the way it looked in Star Trek Three. They must have updated it in one of the Next Generation appearances to make it look like this. So a couple choices there. Compatible with custom lighting. Hopefully that means lots of clear parts. 79 parts. That seems like a lot for this ship. Uh, we'll have to see what they do on there. Complete decal placement guide. And just like I mentioned, optional registries and pennants if you want to make it uh, be one of the Oberth class ships from the next generation. And 13 inches long when you're done. All right, let's break this open and look at the plastic. I guess right before that, we will look at the inside of the box. And like Round 2 has been doing, you get these wonderful full color pictures to show uh, the decal placement and your paint guide. Yeah, you, you know, this is not quite your traditional um, Starfleet ship. So no clear reds for warp nacelles, no clear blues for warp grills, no deflector dish to light up blue. Uh, we're talking white, silver, gunmetal, and a little bit of robin's egg blue. Uh, so a little bit different than a lot of the ships. Now, a lot of times with round two models, uh, we have to be very forgiving uh, because they're repops. They're old models that are being re-released again. Um, a model like this, we don't need to be forgiving at all. This is a new model designed and released in 2021. Uh, so really, it's absolutely fair to be exceptionally demanding and insist that a model be held up uh, to modern standards. And Round 2 has done a great job with the 1 1000 scale uh, Discovery Enterprise and the 1 1000 Voyager that just came out. Um, and my first impressions are that this is absolutely going to be a nice modern model uh, to work on. Um, here is our top of the saucer so we can see uh, they have really done great um, cutting out all the windows. And yes, we do have clear parts for all the windows. Uh, these windows really are tiny, uh, but they are very crisp. So here's a quarter. Uh, you can see this in t this mill bridge dome is about the size of a quarter. Um, but very sharp corners on all those cutouts. Uh, these tiny, um, that's probably less than a millimeter thick uh, for that rib between the windows. Um, so I, these are exceptionally done windows. Um, I think they're even better done than the 350th Katinga, which had a lot of small windows to be cut out. A lot of the windows in the Katinga still even had a, a little bit of flash inside because they were trying to do windows so small. Um, wonderful engraved lines kind of here and some nice mechanical parts along the very back uh, you can see lots of little windows uh, along the back those might be impulse engines and it, it's all done in really a a very brilliant white um, i'm not sure how it looks on camera it might look a little gray but this is really um it looks um, copier paper white. So paper white uh, for the plastic and very nicely detailed. Uh, so parts of the pylons, the top of the saucer, uh, this is part of the main hull, and this is kind of one of the rear walls behind the saucer. Here is the, we'll call it the sensor palette, that sensor equipment. And you can see really, once again, tiny windows here. Uh, these are probably, that's probably a millimeter um, uh, diameter uh, for those little holes. So these are for navigation lights. So it looks like we'll have little clear parts. One side is green, uh, one side is red. So clear parts for the navigation. Um, very nice engraved panel lines. 
And of course, this kind of ribbed section here, very nicely engraved. Um, that'd be very nice to do, I believe it's silver, and then we can do a little bit of a wash to accent those panel lines. Uh, but everything is, is very, very crisp. Uh, we'll have to see how it comes off the sprue. Um, but I really don't envision any problems. And inside, very open structure. Uh, I remember on the Excelsior, all of these fins had big supports out here that um, would kind of fill up the entire section. Uh, but this is very nice and clean on the inside. All right, this is the bottom of the saucer. Uh, once again, some very nice kind of mechanical shapes there. Some wonderfully cut windows. And all of this is about the size of a quarter. So you can really see how well those windows are done. These are some of the grills that are on the back of the nacelle. And I can't wait to start putting this together. Hopefully those match up uh, just perfectly. Uh, whenever you're kind of joining two halves, hopefully they just line up well. Here's the other part of that big platform. The top of the saucer mounts on here. Uh, here is the detail for the impulse crystals. So very nicely done. And the engraved lines for the top of the nacelle. Uh, this is kind of a larger navigation beacon um, on both sides of the nacelle. Not too much to light up on the ship. Like I said, no big glowing grills or anything, but nav lights and windows within the saucer will all need to be lit up. And now here's how we really get to 79 parts for the part count. Tons of little windows. Very, very nicely done. Uh, they are very, very clear. No bubbles, no distortions. And I can't wait to try and put those in the saucer and see how well they match up with those really finely done uh, window sections. Looks like these are probably your nav beacons for the top of the nacelles. Uh, these look like a clear part on the back of the nacelle. Uh, they look like they would fit in here but wonderfully done clear parts. And I I don't think this is a snap kit at all. Um, tiny low location posts here. These are very, very thin. Um, so I don't think it's snapping into anything. Sure, lots of location holes here, but none of them are kind of the snap tight type. Uh, so definitely a model you'll have to kind of glue. And once again, very big open spaces. So running lights to all these navigation beacons will be simple. And it, it even looks like we have some pre-done cutouts uh, to really help with that. All right, and here are the decals. Um, as I mentioned, this ship was made for Star Trek III, but reused a lot in The Next Generation and on Deep Space Nine. So you could really pick any episode it's in. Um, I know it's in The Naked Now. I know it's in Pegasus. Um, I know it's in the end of generations, so lots of different registries. Um, it looks like uh, the red lettering was only in Star Trek Three. After that, it looks like they did um, lettering without the red pinstripe. Uh, it looks like a couple different types of pennants. So we'll have to check which of those were from Star Trek Three and which were from the next generation. You get a lot of red piping, um, and you get... Uh, kind of this blue and black lines that go on the edge of the saucer. And of course, some of the red pinstriping that wraps around the sensor palette uh, on my tiny Oberth, um, which was all we really had in a commercial kit for a long time. Um, it's this stripe right here uh, that's kind of done on the decal sheet here. So a very nice decal sheet uh, with lots of the red pinstriping. But it's going to be kind of fun um, to paint a lot more of the ship on the bigger scale ship rather than this little small one, which was done mostly with decals. All right, well, I am just 
absolutely thrilled at getting to work at this model. I love Star Trek models. I love to just put some simple lights in the model. And I, I love it when a model makes lighting easy. And really, with these windows, um, this is going to be nice. No windows to cut out, uh, nothing to drill. Um, it doesn't even look like I'll have much work running wires through things. Um, this is going to be absolutely fantastic. And I mean, I love the Voyager builds I did at the start of the summer, uh, done in clear and kind of, um, moving the, removing the paint, kind of scraping it off. Uh, but having it done like this, where, uh, the windows are just cut out from the get go is going to make this a tremendously fun model uh, to build and light. And I, I really think I'm going to have fun uh, painting it, kind of painting these large silver areas, um, maybe accenting panel lines. I don't know how much of an Aztec pattern I'm going to do on this. Um, I don't necessarily know that it will need much of an Aztec, uh, but I, I'm very much excited uh, for this build. It should be a lot of fun. All right. Now, it is in one 350th scale, and it shares a movie with the Refit Enterprise, so um, we'll do a couple quick shots of the parts together. Um, so here is our saucer for the Enterprise and the saucer uh, for the Grissom. So you can see that the saucer for the Grissom um, really is the size of the entire bridge BC deck combination there. Now, as far as the length of the ship, I, that sensor pallet's going to be about the same length as the engineering hull. Uh, so these two, I gosh, I was not expecting that. I was expecting this really to be dwarfed, uh, but it really will be just about the same size uh, for the sensor pallet to be about as long as this section on the Enterprise, um, just with a much smaller saucer. Uh, so I, I think the Grissom won't really look out of place beside this um, on a shelf. If you can find a shelf big enough for your refit 350 scale that can hold other ships with it. One more size comparison. So this is the classic Bird of Prey model kit that has been out forever. Um, I think you can call this 1 3 of scale because, of course, the Bird of Prey is never very consistent in its size. Um, so I think there's an argument it would be in scale with the Reef Enterprise and the Grissom. And there you can kind of see um, how those might stack up. Uh, the Oberth will definitely be longer and kind of more dense than the bird of prey. All right, so hopefully that's a good first look at the 1 3 50th scale USS Grissom, all new kit by Polar Light slash round two. I'm really excited to build this model. I will hopefully start on it this week and do lots of videos showing you how well it builds together, seeing how well those windows fit into those little cutouts. Hopefully a very fun model to build. And that one will be coming up. Now, my next video will probably be the unboxing of this kit, uh, the Empire Strikes Back at -AT Armored All-Terrain Transport uh, by MPC, re-released by Round 2. So we'll do an unboxing on this and then just build videos on both models. So thank you guys very much for following the channel. Stay tuned for these builds and I'll be back soon.